Bike counter, lock and load closed handling system, and PAL herbicide. By country companies. Travel agent for both Bradley and Illinois State. Hello and welcome to Bradley Basketball at WEEK. I'm Lee Hall. This game is going to help determine just where Illinois State ends up when they go to St. Louis in the Missouri Valley Tournament. And Roger Figley is going to help determine if the Braves get there at all. You're right, Lee. The Bradley's got three games remaining. They're definitely going to have to win two of them. One of them definitely probably the game at Wichita. They could really make a great stride by beating the Redbirds here tonight. But it's going to be a tough, tough challenge. This is a game that ISU cannot afford to lose and still expect to win the Valley Conference. It's the final home game for senior Sean Smith and James Bailey. We'll be back with a tribute to them when we return. And Illinois State, the Braves lead the series, the all-time series, that is 43 to 30. The Braves won both games last year. ISU, a sweep two years ago in Bob Bender's first year in normal. There you get a good look at Jim Molinari, 0-1 against Illinois State. It's the final home game for seniors, Sean Smith and James Bailey. And we got the coaches' thoughts on those two seniors a little while back. You know, when you come in with big expectations, and obviously, with, from what I understand from his background of being preseason conference player of the year, and it doesn't work out, it's easy to give up on something. And he really hasn't done that. And uh, he's been up and down. I've asked him to play a role, but he's really tried to play that role, and I appreciate it. Patience, and obviously, with from what I understand from his background of being preseason conference player of the year, and it doesn't work out, it's easy to give up on something. And he really hasn't done that. And uh, he's been up and down. I've asked him to play a role, but he's really tried to play that role, and I appreciate it. And uh, a couple of guys who maybe wouldn't have gotten a lot of playing time, uh, not for the coaching change. And uh, James Bailey came in with a lot of expectations. I think he was uh, he was pumped up by the last coaching staff, and uh, it was a lot to live up to for him. Yeah, he may have had too much pressure put on him initially. He was uh, touted as a newcomer of the year in the, in the Valley his first year here and just never quite lived up to those expectations. And a lot of times when that happens, you know, it can add that extra pressure to an individual and force them to become a little more frustrated than they normally should and not let them play at their natural ability. But, uh, you know, there we get a nice look at James there. And he's really come around and, and played pretty well as of late. Uh, it's tough to come off the bench not getting consistent time as he has and contribute every night, but it, it seems as his playing time increased, his uh, numbers popped up and and it became quite a factor for the Braves later on this season. Jim Molinari had a great line last week, too. He said they may not be Jimmy Less and Percy Hawkins, but, you know, it'd be nice for the fans to come out and give them a good hand for the uh, the ability and uh, the desire that they've shown here. Well, you know, that's What true. they've done with that ability. Exactly. And beyond that, you and I, we get a chance to travel with the team a little bit and uh, we get to meet these young people and just know what a quality individual they got as they come. Here's tonight's opening lineups. And for Bradley, 6'3", freshman from Carroll Stream, Illinois, 32, Roger Sucky. The other Redbird guard is 6'2", sophomore from Quincy, Illinois, number 34, Todd Remhamer. And for Bradley, a 6'4", senior from Wichita, 24, Sean Smith. At center for ISU, a 6'5", senior from Chicago, 42, Scott Fowler. In the middle for Bradley, a 6'8", freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, number four, David Chainsaw Winslow. And a forward for the Redbirds is 6'7", sophomore from Newton, Massachusetts, 21, Scott Taylor. And for Bradley, a 6'1", junior from Peoria Central, 14, here's Charles White. The other ISU forward is 6'6", junior from Chicago, number three, Steve Fitch. 
Captain for Bradley is 6'6", senior from Houston, Texas, number five, James Bailey. The coaches in his third season at Illinois State, Bob Bender. And for Bradley in his first season, Jim Molinari, your Bradley Braves. The starting lineup presented by Counter Lock and Load, Close Handling System, and Brow Herbicide. The tip off when we come back. Corn Growers. Rootworm protection has taken on a whole new shape. Introducing the Lock and Load Closed Handling System. The new four game homestand. And they won all four. The first win coming against Bradley 10 days ago. The Braves win the tip. David Winslow in the starting lineup for the second straight game. And you can see the little surprise that Dave Reynolds alluded to in the paper this morning. Black shoes for the Braves. They try to get something going. The crowd on their feet. That's the usual size crowd you'd uh, anticipate for an Illinois State Bradley game, but a lively crowd on hand. Looks like quite a few people came over from the Bloomington Normal area, too. Sitting behind the basket that the Braves are attempting to score at now. Illinois State, the man-to-man. -man. They'll help a lot. Shot clock at six. Smith with it. Five. Shoots. Off the rim. Nobody wants to go get it. Taylor comes down with it for the Redbirds. And the Bradley fans stay on their feet. Richard Thomas, the junior for Illinois State. Now Todd Wemhainer from Quincy. The Birds coming off a 44-43 win Saturday against Indiana State at Redbird Arena. Now it's the Braves on the break. Sean Smith and Todd Wemhainer. The kick save. It did look like a goalie there for the hockey team. <laughs> hey, you went, went down to the pads and kicked that one away with the skate, but it did save a basket. Bradley with an opportunity there to get a two-on-one opportunity. A good eye-foot coordination. You can tell he's from Quincy. They play a lot of soccer over there. Watch this. A la Trevor Trimpey. No score. We played a minute 20. Illinois State at Bradley. Inside. Winslow, the arching shot. We've and the Braves are on the board. We've talked here all year long how David Winslow's got to get a little stronger, establish position inside. Jim Molinari wants to get the ball inside, just haven't had a horse to go into lately. That was a nice move there by the chainsaw. Scott Fowler playing hurt tonight. This is his first shot attempt. The Braves a 2-0 lead. You know, if remember 10 days ago, Bradley got out to just a terrific start at the Redford Arena. Went up 17-5. to you know Bob Bender doesn't want his records to come out that slow here tonight. Inside, James Bailey. Foul counted. I tell you, the Braves are doing a great job right now. They seem to be spreading the floor a little bit more, and it's keeping the middle open. The foul is on Steve Fitch, his first, team first. Fitch just caught completely out of position there. It was an easy pass, and James had great position there. And once he caught the pass, and you see Fitch was behind him. Nothing he could do but foul. James Bailey's free throw misses, so it's 4 0 Braves. <laughs> the Redbirds tied for second in the Valley with Southwest Missouri State. And Richard Thomas is fouled on the drive to the bucket. That foul will go against Winslow, his first, team first. Going to get a look at this. Take a look at uh, James Bailey on this play. See? Doesn't have his eye on the ball and his man. Therefore, he had his back to the play. And uh, Thomas drove the baseline on him and got a pretty easy shot. Richard Thomas, a six-foot guard from Chicago. Whitney Young, he's a junior, 58% free thrower. He's really struggled from the line lately. He only played six minutes in the first game against Bradley. He had a knee injury. Did not score in that ball game. You can see he's still wearing a knee pad. Hits the second one, and Illinois State's on the board. 4-1, and the Redbirds apply some pressure. Broken easily by Bradley. Sookie tries to penetrate. Kicks it back out to James Bailey. A lot of movement off this 
defensively for Bradley. Hey, remember 10 days ago, Bradley came with the weave around the top. It was something new they hadn't shown all year. It worked very well for him until ISU made some adjustments. Now it looks like Jim Molinari's got his brakes spread out, trying to get some penetration, a thing that they've lacked all year long. There's Bob Bender, three and two against Bradley. Including that 58-46 win 10 days ago at Redbird Arena. Scott Taylor, the NBC Player of the Week. Scott's been on a roll lately here and he gets the ball in a position where he can try and drive to the basket, makes a, makes a nice fake there and drives in and goes up for the shot and definitely got fouled. Taylor 79% from the free throw line, the Valley Player of the Week, the first Redbird to win that honor this season. This is his first free throw. And that's really a tribute to the ISU team and the coaching staff, too. Taylor, like you said, the only player this year for the Redbirds to make that position, and yet the team's in a, a situation where they could win the conference title. The Redbirds one for four from the line. They've been shooting well from there lately as a team. Things that they've done the last half of the season to really pick up their play. They've been going to the line quite a bit more than their opponents. In the last 11 of their 14 games, they've shot more free throws than their opponents, and they've been shooting at a 75% clip, and that's pretty good. Sookie, the penetration, puts it up and in. Roger Sookie's first two. Well, I guarantee you, penetration was in the game plan at the Bradley locker room today. Everybody looking to drive the ball to the basket. Steve Fitch down in the corner. Now it's Scott Fowler to Richard Thomas. Redbirds without a field goal for the first four minutes of this ball game. Off to a start similar to the one against Bradley in normal. Taylor, charge. You can sense the sluggishness offensively for Illinois State. Watch Winslow move his feet here, play defense with your feet. They said he got in front and got enough position to draw that charging foul. Second team foul against the Redbirds, 6-1. Over eight minutes ISU went in Bloomington without a field goal. They're just as cold here to start this one. John Smith, the baseline drive, cut off by Wendt Hayner, gives the wind throw, misses the dunk. Redbirds the other way. Thomas to Taylor, foul. Oh, such a bad turnaround. What a nice pass by Sean. Got that ball to the chain so he couldn't make the dunk. Turns into a long rebound and a fast break the other way. The second meeting between Bob Bender and Jim Molinari. Scott Taylor, 0 for 2 from the line, 1 for 3. But the Redbirds still without a field goal. Scott Taylor is a sophomore from Newton, Massachusetts. four-point lead. John Smith, nowhere to go with it. He and Winslow trade it. Pass inside to Charles White. Foul on Scott Fowler. His second. He injured a ribcage muscle against Indiana State Saturday. Bob Bender was not sure if Fowler would play or just how much he'd be able to play. Check that, the first foul, first personal against Scott Fowler. Charles White makes the first free throw. White, money on both free throws, and the Braves off to another good start against Illinois State. 8-2.
place to be player of the game, Budweiser, the king of beer. Bradley off to another good start against Illinois State. 17-5 was the lead in normal 10 days ago. It's 8-2 so far, and Illinois State has got almost five minutes without a field goal to start the game. That's Bradley's version of the baseline bunch. Bender's baseline bunch has a bird's eye view up in section 18 and 19 here at Carver Arena, the upper ball. Starter still in there for Illinois State. Chad Klein has checked in for the Braves. We still haven't seen James Hamilton yet. Fowler inside, and that ends the drought. Five minutes, ten seconds into the ball game. Birds with him four. Sookie penetrates. Nice drive. Nice drive. And no help defensively for Illinois State. We run that twice this game. Rodgers has been able to penetrate and finish the shot. Hits the long shot for three. Another aspect of the ISU offensive plan has been to hit some three-point shots. They've shot them very well lately. I don't know what Bob Bender said at that last time out, but the Birds have come out and scored five in less than a minute. Pitch has struggled lately, but he nails his first three of them this evening. James Bailey with the top of the key. 10-7 Braves. They're led by as many as six. 14 minutes to go first half. Roger Sookie, top of the key. They're back in the weave now of the Braves. Now it looks like they're out of it. With six seconds on the shot clock, Bailey is good. I'll tell you what, that's what James Bailey can do. The chance Chad Klein hasn't done this year, or James Hamilton hasn't done a very good job of this year, is being able to step out there and draw those defensive people out the garden by making that jump shot. Webb Hayner has a little trouble hanging on to it. You know, a lot of these offensive troubles we've seen Bradley have throughout the season. It would be helped a lot if they could just hit an outside shot, draw the defense out a little bit, open things up in the middle. Scott Taylor with three. James Hamilton set the check in along with Dwayne Broussard. Mike Vandegaard will come in for the Redbirds on the next stoppage. As will Todd Cagle for Illinois State. John Smith, the miss. ISU the other way. Wim Hayner, pull up jumper short. And Roger Sookie comes down with it. Looks <laughs> like there's a parade going on in front of Press Row here. James Bailey, tough turnaround shot. No good. And Charles White is whistled for the foul as he body slams Todd Wim Hayner into the basket stand. James Hamilton in for James Bailey. So we've got about 18 people, st players standing on the court right now. Dwayne Broussard <laughs> will check in for Charles White. One of our officials is injured. We'll run down our officials for tonight. Ron Spittler of Hutchinson, Kansas. Paul Caster, Terry Turlington. That's Ron Spittler there, shaking off a, looks like a little bit of an injury to a knee or an ankle. He's been around the valley for a long time. He called some Bradley games back when I was playing him. And the That's man can still time. run up and down the floor, ladies and gentlemen. That's a tribute <laughs> to medical science. Chuck Cagle into the ball game now for Illinois State along with Van de Garde. Cagle. Now it's Steve Fitch. That's a good call. Van de Garde really working, trying to get position inside. Just took Hamilton and tried to throw him out of bounds and got, got called for the uh, offensive foul. Here we get a look at it. Vandegaard on the left-hand side of the screen. Watch the left elbow there as he just really uses it to push off. A lot of contact inside. 12-9. Rays lead it. 12 minutes to go first half. James Hamilton and Vandegaard going at it at the other end. There's an elbow from Hamilton. And now 
is going to go against Hamilton. They're going to try and clean it up early. Same official, same call. 11.58 to go first half. Bradley by three. Brought to you by Country Companies Insurance. When it matters most, the country's behind you. Kwame Brown, down to number 25 for the Braves. Houston, Texas native, is famous for his shot blocking. He once blocked 14 shots in one high school game. He's an outstanding swimmer. He was an honor roll student back in high school. Kwame the Swami. At 6'7", I'm guessing all he had to do was dive in the pool, touch one in, and flip around. <laughs> You tall guys don't have to worry about doing any paddling, do you? You gotta stay afloat, though. <laughs> Illinois State trailed 8-2 at one point. Six has been Bradley's biggest lead. Illinois State went five minutes, ten seconds without a field goal to start the game. Hit, shot, block. Charles White got a piece of it. And it's Bradley the other way. Fitch gets called for the air ball, but I think somebody got a, I think Charles White got a hand on it. And now Fitch. He really wasn't, uh, he really wasn't, really wasn't contesting that call, was he? Really? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Elmer Fudd on color commentary tonight. There's not much question there, Steve. Chad Altadonna checks in for the Redbirds. He replaces Todd Wemhainer. Bradley fans will remember Chad Altadonna for the rest of their lives. 17 points, a career high in game one. Both teams in a little bit of a dry spell offensively. Charles White, here's that. Hey, the game is so much easier when you get easy shots now and then it's three or four layup baskets that the Braves have gotten and it just makes your offense look so much better when you can complement with that type of shot selection. <laughs> Taylor, a tough shot, but really? he rolls in. That was a tough shot. Looked like he left his feet to shoot it and didn't have the ball under control and kind of had to throw it up from the hip. Five for Taylor, the Valley player of the week. Mike Vandegaard hits the floor hard, and it's going to be another one against James Hamilton. His second. That's the sixth team foul. So next team foul on Bradley. ISU will go to the line. James, James says he didn't really touch it, and I was kind of watching, and it didn't really look like a lot of contact. I think Vandegaard got a little bit of an acting award there, and it paid off for him, and picked up the, with the second foul on Willie. Yes, it is. Scott in for Scott. Fowler for Taylor. David Winslow will check in for the Braves next chance. Vandegaard. Loses it, Braves the other way with a three-point lead. <laughs> Hamilton into the lane. A lot of contact in there. Charles White the offensive glass. Charles with six. Okay, this is a lot better game than what we saw 10 days ago over Bloomington. Both teams are up a little bit, playing with a little more aggression with a little bit better quickness. Nice pass inside. Nice good, 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 interior, good interior pass work by ISU that time. 16-13. 9 to go first half. Dad flying with it. Looks like they're going back to a little bit of a weave there. A little bit of a weave. You see ISU switching it out front over the top. The Braves are shooting an outstanding percentage here. That's eight for Charles White. Eighteen, thirteen. Braves by five. Well, you're right. They, Charles White. They are really trying to clean it up. That was a very touchy foul on Charles there. James Bailey, David Winslow back in for Bradley. Hamilton, Klein will both take a seat. Both of those young men fighting injuries. Steve Fitch comes out for Chuck Barnes. You know, first look at him tonight. You know what, you can't really blame the officiating crew tonight for trying to clean this thing up early. History has proven time and time again that regardless of what the score is, when these two teams get together, it has a tendency to turn into a war. Senior Sean Smith in for Charles White. Sean favoring one side there, and he might, uh, might have pulled a muscle. 
There's to be some confusion here. Barnes came in for Fitch, but Fitch has a little business to take care of at the free throw line. Although if it was a business, he'd be bankrupt. 41% from the line this season. Yeah, you can see where they try to sneak him out and get Barnes <laughs> at the line. Quite a bit better free throw shooter. Makes that one. Steve Fitch, a junior. He transferred from Lincoln Junior College. Played his high school ball at Oak Park River Forest in the Chicago area. Makes them both. Now Barnes will replace Fitch. Once again, after the made free throw, I oh, they call it off. I thought they were going to try and set the press up. Now they back it off. 18-15. Then fall into his zone. Barely going to look at his zone for the first time. Now you see a match up a little bit out of that. Haven't seen too much of it this season. Broussard. James Bailey. Sean Smith now in the near corner. Changing defense has really hurt the Braves Saturday against Drake. They struggled in that ball game. Sean Smith, three, no good. Rebound, Bandegar. Cagle gives the Bandegar. maintained possession and the crowd wanted it to go to Bradley. Inside, Vandegaard off the glass. Well, I think, think ISU caught Bradley asleep there, passing into Vandegaard right near the basket. He just went up and made a move and stuck it in. Bradley was standing around five foot. Birds within one, 18-17. Close as they've been in the ball game. Eight minutes to go, first half. And a turnover for Brie U. Their fourth. Richard Thomas will check into the ball game. And we'll take a timeout with 7.59 to go in the first half. And we got a good one at Carver Arena. Bradley leads Illinois State by one. Wow, Country Companies, First National Bank of Peoria, Kitchen Cook, Potato Chips, Jim McComb Chevrolet, Moore's Jewelers, Taco Bell, UA Cable, Quality Ford Dealers, and Budweiser for help making tonight's telecast possible. Yeah, Illinois State down one, they trailed by as many as six. Vandegaard, tough shot off the glass. Gets his own rebound, puts it up, count it. And Vandegaard will go to the line for the three-point play. And Illinois State takes its first lead of the night. I'll tell you, I like Vandegaard. He comes off the bench as a six-man. Really comes in and makes things happen immediately. Well, he is a six-man, but he is leading Illinois State in scoring in Valley games. When you, when you talk about production also, Zivins is just under 10 points a game, or just at 10 points a game. Only plays 18 minutes a game, so it shows that he comes in and he's ready to go right away. This is a free throw, so it's Illinois State with a 19-18 lead. They're first to the ball game. They're on a mini run here, 6-0. Sean Smith, top of the key, book it. The first field goal for Sean tonight. He's now one for four from the field. Altadonna high off the glass. Oh, I remember that name. 17 Boy. points, a career high 10 days ago at ISU. He made all four of his shots there. That's his first one tonight. Illinois State's got as many points right now with seven minutes to go in the first half as they did in the first half against Indiana State and as many points as they did in the first half against Bradley. So this is a, kind of a scoring extravaganza tonight. Hey, the intensity's up a little bit more tonight. It just seems like a, a better game. Both teams looking to push the ball up the floor a little bit. They're coming out playing aggressive defensively. You can just see it. The excitement's in the air. 
Ryan Kern into the ball game for Illinois State. Kwame Brown in for Bradley. Seven minutes to go. Brown, a nice pass inside. I tell you what, I'm impressed by his pass and Chad Klein, the bucket. Kwame Brown gets better and better every single game. And the 6'7 sophomores made 20 or 25 shots from the floor. 80% from the floor this year. Vandegaard inside, fouled by Kwame Brown. Somebody better wake up the scoreboard operator. It's 22-21. Bradley with a one-point lead. Keeper gets a round of applause. Vandegaard back at the line. And Vandegaard ties it. Mike Vandegaard, 6'7", 190-pound sophomore from Bloomington, Minnesota. He was recruited by both Bradley and Illinois State. He was one of five finalists for Minnesota Mr. Basketball a couple of years ago. Hits them both. Talk about a guy picking up his play. Last year he shot 30% from the field. This year he's up to over 53% from the floor. A lot of it due to the type of position. He's got good foot work around the basket and he gets himself in a position where he can score from. Illinois State with the pressure. Elvin Flores now into the ball game for the first time. He has not played a lot this season, but he's getting more playing time the last two or three games. Antoine Hicks also in for Illinois State. Kwame Brown fights for position against Brian Kern. Klein the drive, no basket, charging against Chad Klein. I hope we can get another look at that. I was kind of blocked out on the play. It was down at the other end, but I thought Chad did a great job. Watch this. I think he does a great job here of sliding laterally. Illinois State prides themselves on taking charges for every charge, every three charges they take, they get a skull and crossbones to put on the back of their shoe. Vandegaard dropped by Kwame Brown, so Vandegaard will go back to the line. Not a very smart foul there by Kwame Brown. Now, if you don't like to have a, see one of your players go out that far on the floor and foul a big man shooting, now Vandegaard granted is a good shooter, but he hasn't made one from out there yet tonight, and, and you don't want to see him fouled on his first opportunity. Vandegaard, two for three from the line. Ten team fouls on Bradley, so Illinois State will shoot two for the final 6.06 for the first half. And that's where they've been beating teams lately. They've outscored their foes from the free throw line in 16 of 24 games, including 11 of the last 14. I think that's something you hit on a little earlier, Roger. Vandegaard hits on both of them, and it's 25-22, Illinois State by three. Eight for Mike Vandegaard. And what, what makes that free throw shooting even more important, ISU has been in so many games this year that have been close games. Eight of the last ten have been decided by 18 points or less, or 18 points by a total of 18 points, I should say. Richard Thomas unhappy that he had to come over and help out on this one. Nice pass inside to Kwame Brown. And that would have been an easy two for Kwame the Swami who takes those up and buries them for the dunk. Todd Webhainer back into Illinois State. Kwame Brown at the line. And he'll shoot one of the bonus. Illinois State, a three-point lead. And they'll look to increase that right here. The well, free throw is 15 feet away. That's about 13 feet out of Kwame's range. Elvin Flores, not a good shot. Five second counts on. Stolen away by Todd Wemhainer, and a foul on Kwame Brown is his third. Todd Wemhainer, fifth in the Missouri Valley in steals, and he's got to be a good candidate for the all-defensive team this season. It's his hand on one there, and then Kwame Brown whistled for the foul. So they must have gotten their feet tangled up or something. 
One hand went down pretty hard there. It didn't look like a lot of contact on the replay. Todd Wemhainer, sophomore from Quincy, makes the first one. I don't think Coach Van Syak is here tonight, but uh, Manuel fans remember Todd Wemhainer. His Quincy team beat Manuel a couple of years ago and went on to the Elite Eight. He's one of those guys that's helped by she bring that percentage up to 75%, making 15 of his last 19 now. to play first half. Illinois State its biggest lead, 27-22. James Hamilton looks to move against Kern off the glass. Good. Good spin move. Good spin move by Willie down low. First two for Willie. Bradley's back within three. Taylor from the L. Good. And Jim Molinari is very upset at the lack of defensive intensity by Bradley. Well, Sean Smith did a nice job there cutting off the baseline. But all they did was find Taylor standing wide open at the L. You can't give the young man that shot from there. Hamilton the bucket. And he'll go to the line. I don't know about you, but he looked more set than the one they called when Hicks was underneath. Well, yeah, maybe not. He got over there quickly. Chad Altadonna, Steve Fitz check in for Elvin Flores and Antoine Hicks. James Hamilton will go to the line for the three-point play. And it's a two-point ball game. Fitch. The two junior college players go at it. Fitch scores. Fitch with a nice size advantage when he can get that close to the basket. Fitch with seven. Sookie drives and hits. He's having a good ball game. He's having a great game. It's all started with that penetration. He's finishing shots tonight. That's something he hasn't done earlier in the season. Made all three of his shots as Roger Sookie, the freshman from Carroll Stream. It's 31-29. Illinois State by two. And Charles White comes up with a steal. Steve Fitch will be auditioning for the Globetrotters who will be here in town tomorrow night. Sean Smith, jumper, no good. Illinois State, a three on two if they heard. Gives it to the trailer, Altadonna lays it up, lays it in. Altadonna with four. And that is the Illinois State lead with 2.49 to play first half. They try to lob to Willie. An ill-advised pass. Scott Fowler into the ball game for Illinois State. He'll replace Brian Kern. Dwayne Broussard will check in for Bradley. And we will check out for a break. 33-29, Illinois State by four with 2.41 to go in the first half. And as a place where young people can take important steps toward the rest of their lives. I'm Bob Michael, and as a lifelong Puran and... Charges they take. They get a good look at that. Bob Bender's birds have taken charge. 33-29, 2.41 to go here in the first half. Bradley flashback. Special feature about a great Bradley moment in history brought to you by the First National Bank of Peoria in their 129th year. 1970 marked his first year. Dr. Martin Abrex, presidency at Bradley University for 22 years. Brought many great advancements to Bradley. Under Dr. Abeg's guidance, Bradley's become one of the finest private universities in the country. Dr. Abeg recently retired, but he's still a big supporter of Bradley basketball. Braves down four, they led by as many as six. Altadonna 
Gives inside. Scott Taylor. Off the glass. Can't get it to roll in. Fowler comes up with it. Off the glass. Good. Good second effort by ISU. ISU seems to really be taking over a lot of aspects of the basketball game. One game, place where they're really starting to shine through is at the free throw line. 10 of 15 for the Redbirds, only 3 of 5 for Bradley. A better percentage, but not nearly enough trips to the free throw line. Been a problem this play, Bradley, all season. Sookie, short, out to down to the rebound. Two minutes to go, first half. Illinois State, a six-point lead. Bradley fans want to travel. Webb Hainer, the shot, no good. Pitched the rebound, but couldn't control. This is something Illinois State struggled with, too, this season, Roger. They get a lead on a team, but they can't put them away. Well, that's evident by the number of close games that they've had. They've played well throughout most of the season, but you're right. With all those close games, they could be well in front of this Valley race. But their inability to put people away have kept them close in the race also. Charles White from outside, no good. Fowler couldn't hang on, and Bradley gets a new 45 with a minute 10 to go first half. Braves down six. Now uh, they need to put a little run here together and get something going in before the half. Fine shot. Boy, that was a good shot for him too. Just couldn't get it to go down. 55 seconds to go first half. A... Right here, oh Charlie, my goodness, good hustle Chuck, Charles White, jeez, you got thought Dinah Weinbreck looked good with the skis, he did that mogul thing right over there, did you see that? You got a good look at those new black shoes, didn't you? <laughs> Size 11 for Charles, I think I signed my name on the bottom of him too as he went by. <laughs> There's Charlie. Oh, my goodness. I'm the guy next to the guy with the panic look on his face. <laughs> well, I went for the ball, and then here comes Charles. I couldn't catch them both, and I got neither one. 25 seconds to go. Let's get back to business here. 35-29, ISU by six. Bradley will take one shot. My goodness, I didn't even get a chance to get loosened up for that either. <laughs> hate to go into a game cold like that. Eight seconds, James Hamilton, short. ISU tips, tips, Charles White with it with three, with two, with one, no good. Dwayne Broussard's follow wouldn't go. Would have counted had he made it. The Braves can't get the final shot to go. And they trail Illinois State 35-29 at the half. Hey, Redbirds leading Bradley 35-29. Roger, another good start for Bradley, but uh, they couldn't maintain that, and Illinois State now leads it by six and a half. Now you're right. They started off very well, and, and we've got a couple of replays here, and one of them shows exactly how well Bradley was getting the ball inside and getting some, some nice, easy baskets. We can get it up here in a minute. Here's the pass. Look at Willie with the inside position. Good pass away from the defense. Goes right in, gets a shot up, gets fouled. ISU kind of took over later on in the, uh, the ball game. I think they switched up, went zone a little bit, slowed Bradley down somewhat offensively. We were able to get some breaks going themselves. Here's a good look at Wimander driving a lane, knowing where everybody is on the floor, drops it back to uh, Al Tadana, who drops in an easy one. Bradley led at 1.18-13. From that point, Illinois State went on a 22-11 run, and they lead it at halftime, 35-29. have an opportunity to become acquainted with some of the most cutting edge art that uh, is available at this time. When we were putting up the, uh, the Linda Howard sculpture centerpiece this fall, my students couldn't help but become involved because this, the sculpture was constructed in the studio where I teach, so they were walking around and over the parts for several several days. And then when the sculpture was largely uh, fabricated, they were involved in carrying the piece over physically, uh, lifting it up and carrying it from poser to the quad. Fine and visual arts are important to Bradley just because uh, they're a very vital part of the whole education.
35-29, Illinois State leads Bradley at the half. Of course, this is the final Bradley home game. This is our final telecast this season on WEEK. We want to take a minute here to thank some people who have helped a lot this season in our Bradley telecast. Thanks, first of all, to the Bradley Sports Information Department, headed by Joe D'Alfonso, for providing us with up-to-the-minute stats and information throughout the year. A tip of the hat to everyone at the Peoria Civic Center. A big thanks to Cindy Huggins of WEEK's production department for typing all the paperwork and making all the reservations for our wonderful road trips. Muchas gracias to ITSI and Carol Stream, our production home away from home, and all the staff, Bill, Kelly, Lenny, Tom, and Bill. Thank you, folks. This telecast has looked excellent this year. And you guys have got great equipment, too, and that makes it a lot easier for us. One person who's done a tremendous amount of work to help spice up this year's game, Little Tommy, Tom Schmidt, who also directs the games. He spent an enormous portion of his free time designing graphics and entering stats in our Superscribe to give us a more professional look. Our heartfelt thanks to Mr. Schmidt, Roy Johnson, who's no longer with us. Our thanks to him. He's in Texas now. Thanks to Steve Shaw, Harry Cole, our stats man, the Bradley coaching staff, and thanks to Don and Scotty Fegley for letting us take the big guy away from him every now and then. If we've forgotten anybody, thank you, too. Thanks to Mark Strauss, Tim Burton, for filling in for me when I have to be away from my duties. We'll return to Carver Arena right after these messages. Half stats, both teams shooting well. The difference, the free throws. Illinois State 10 to 3 at the free throw line. The turnovers pretty much even rebounds in favor of Bradley. The leading scorer for Illinois State, Mike Vandegaard, with 8. For Bradley, it's Charles White with 8. A 22 11 run for Illinois State to close out the first half, and they lead it by 6. Here, Illinois State goes home Thursday night to take on Creighton, then they visit Drake on Monday to wrap up the regular season. Bradley goes to Tulsa and to Wichita State. So a tough road ahead for Bradley. And if they don't win tonight, they can pretty much forget about going to the Valley Tournament, I do believe. The Illinois State the turnover. James Hamilton will start the second half. He was not in the starting lineup tonight because of that ankle sprain. It's Hamilton, James Bailey, Sean Smith, Charles White, and Roger Sookie for Bradley. For ISU, it's Richard Thomas, Scott Taylor, Scott Fowler, Steve Fitch, and Todd Wimhainer. Sean Smith, double team down low. Now puts up the shot blocked by Fowler. James Bailey comes up with it. Shot clock at 15. Smith drives baseline. Foul is on Fowler, who is indeed the Fowler on that one. Sean trying to work hard down there, found themselves in a land of trees. Fowler stepped in and just collared him around the neck. The way Fowler's bulked up and got all that equipment on, he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger of the Terminator. Hamilton. Can't bounce it in. Taylor the rebound for ISU. Birds look to increase a six-point lead. We played a minute in the second half. Pitch drives on White, puts it up. Blocked by James Bailey. The senior going out in style. Get that stuff out of here. James Bailey fired up. John Smith, jumper off the glass, no good. Taylor the rebound. JT had played a, made a nice defensive move there. He went straight up, changed Sean Smith's shot, made him shoot it with a little more arch. Banked off the board a little bit hard. I really doubt that Sean was trying to shoot it off the board from straight away like that. Richard Thomas, baseline jumper. Hook him, Dano. Three for Richard Thomas. First basket of the night. LSU coming out, playing a lot better here to start the second half than they did the first half. Bradley taking off right from where they left off, a little bit slow, a little bit ragged offensively, and not putting many points on the board to finish the first half. ISU's biggest lead. They're up 
up eight. Looking for three. Good. But Rogers had a great game so far. He's penetrated early, got some easy baskets, and now steps up and hits a big three for Bradley to start the scoring in the second half. Looking with nine. Scored 12 in Saturday's loss to Drake. Fitch a tough shot. Sean Smith helps him out by fouling him. Well, Sean's in a lot of trouble here when he lets Steve Fitch get that close to the basket with the basketball with the size disadvantage. And Fitch has got a little jumping ability also. He just jumps right around and takes his jump shot. And Sean gets a hand. Looks like he cut him on the face. Dwayne Broussard checks in for Sean Smith. Broussard with four rebounds in the first half. Second only to Charles White's five for the Braves. Fitch at the line. Two for two from the line. Three for three on the night. And he's only shooting 40% from the strike this season. That's 11 points from the line so far for the Birds, and they lead it by six. You know, Zach, as he is, he's only shot 31. That's his 32nd free throw that he shot this year. That's not many free throws for a guy with his body and his athletic ability the way he can take the ball to the basket. He's had some problems adjusting to Division I basketball after transferring from Lincoln Junior College. Steve Fitch, former teammate of Reggie Wilson down at Lincoln. Redford, who's out with a knee injury for the rest of the year. Sookie down low, can't control it. Turnover Bradley. That's their eighth. Seventh. ISU really tightening the screws defensively here, making it really tough for Bradley to put points on the board. Todd Wemhainer tries to get it inside, fires it out of bounds. This is the only game in the Missouri Valley tonight. Both of these teams will be paying very close attention to tomorrow night's game, Wichita State at Southwest Missouri. Broussard almost does the splits. Now it's James Bailey. James Hamilton tries to post up in the lane. They'll go one-on-one -on -one against Fowler. And miss. The Terminator with a rebound. 39-32. The ISU lead is seven. Fowler. Off the glass. No. Looks like Bailey got a piece of it. James Hamilton for three. Count it. It was almost six. In for three, <laughs> back out, and then back in for three more. Willie with eight off the bench. And the Braves are back within four. Wemhater for three. Boy, there's no better way to quiet a crowd after a three-point shot is to come down and bury one of your own. Wim Hainer, not a big score for Illinois State, but he hit the three and comes up with a steal there. Broussard picks it off, and it'll be a foul against Richard Thomas. And that will be the third on the Redbird Junior. Mike Vandegaard in for Scott Fowler. Chad Klein into the ball game. I thought we were going to end up with another player here in our uh, broadcast area. <laughs> well, Wim Hainer was able to plant that foot and make the turn away from us. Sir. You're right, he was coming right toward us. <laughs> and, and we thank him for that. 42-35. We'll be right back. So do my soul check. I'm not sure what the problem is. A apparently one of them is uh, a little goofy. And I, and I didn't mean to get too technical for you there. <laughs> they appear to be in good working order. Well, I was watching and what happens, it goes from 45 to 43, then goes to 49, and has a couple of strange numbers in there, but then at about 40, it matches up with the other one, so both coaches have agreed, have agreed that it's all right.
charge against James Hamilton. He agrees with the call. That's his third personal. Second team foul on the Braves here in the second half. Todd Cagle into the ball game. He replaces Richard Thomas. Seven point ball game. Braves down here in the second half with 15-10 to play in the ball game. Taylor, no Tough good. Shot. Good defensive play. Couple of Redbirds try to get a hand on it, but Charles White gets the layup. I'll tell you, Charles went coast to coast there, under control the entire way, and dribbled through a lot of traffic and got it right up on the glass and in. A nice, nice play. Bradley back within five. 42-37 the score. The crowd's getting into it a little bit. Inside, Taylor. Foul on Chad Klein. Take a look for yourself. A little bit with the left knee there, and that had to have been what they called. Second foul on Klein, third team. Hey, Chad does a nice job there. He keeps his upper body away and keeps his hands up straight, but he works it over pretty good with that lower body. Roger Sookie strips it. Bradley comes up with it. Down five. Chance to close the gap here. Triple team is Hamilton. Redbirds had it, couldn't control. And it will be Bradley's ball. It was an ill-advised pass by Charles. They set the down screen across from uh, Roger Sook. He set the down screen, and then he went out with a double team at the free throw line. It's a good play to get that guard to shot. Charles tried to get it into Willie, and there were three different defensive guys standing right there. Not really a good pass. Fowler out of position, but Vandegaard and Pitts both came to the rescue. The miss by Hamilton, the rebound, Bailey. Double team, hits a tough shot, James Bailey. That was a tough shot. He got the rebound. His head was buried in two ISU defensive players. Once he found out where he was and found the basket, he was able to get in a really tough shot. Charles White, his third. Fourth team foul against the Braves. This one's heating up a little bit. Like we said, Illinois State gets a lead, but they haven't really put anybody away this year. Northern Iowa last week, one of the few games where they've maintained a sizable lead. Vandegaard does the whirling dervish in the lane and has it stripped away. Braves down three. Hamilton, jumper, no good. Al Tadana off to the races. James Bailey's going to be whistled for the foul. If it was football, it would be a clip. Jim Molinari is very upset, but it was a good call. I think if you see the replay, you'll agree. Uh, I don't think Jim realizes what had happened there. I think Jim thinks he fouled the shooter, but what happened is James Bailey just trying to stop the play with a foul. There you see Pushed Steve Fitch. Steve Fitch yeah. there. Didn't get a chance to see it, but that's the foul of the call, the push on pitch. That was a good call. 44-39, ISU by five. Design play. The answer will follow later in the broadcast. Of course, if you're here at Carver Arena, all you have to do is look up the wall and you'll know the answer. There's one less than there should be. I'll say that. We both got it right. Illinois State gets the ball inbounds after the foul on James Bailey. Tipped away by Charles White. Roger, you were saying that Fitch cut in front of Bailey on the way down, and that's what Jim Molinari was protesting. Well, to be honest, I really didn't see it happen that way. I thought they were running side by side. And, but I don't know why James would have pushed him in that instance unless he was just trying to, to commit a foul to keep him from getting the easy layup with uh, Jim Molinari. And some of the officials were going head to head there at that timeout talking about uh, how Steve Fitch cut in front of James Bailey and kept him from getting in a position to try and block that shot. Scott Fowler walks. Ten turnovers for the Birds. Jim Molinari's team hanging around. They're down by five with 13-20 to play in the ball game. 
Jim says he hasn't talked to the team about any pressure about getting to St. Louis in the tournament, but he did say that he'd really like to get there for seniors James Bailey and Sean Smith. Hamilton inside, fouled by Altadonna. A good foul by him. I see that was a much, much better situation to throw that lob pass over top of the defense than what Charles White tried to do earlier. It was spread out more. See in the picture here, the only player you see for Bradley is Willie. And there's only one defensive player there, and Altadonna has to come over late and can't get there in time to stop. All he can do is foul. Fowler's been caught out of position a couple of times now on Hamilton, trying to front him or play around on the outside of him. Really can't hit the free throw. We mentioned this back Saturday. Jim Molinari is the 11th head coach at Bradley. He will be the seventh Bradley head coach to finish below 500 in his first year. And only 40 Anderson, Chuck Orsborn, Joe Stoll, and Stan Albeck had winning records in their first year as Bradley head coach. Pitch for three. 12 for Steve Fitch, who had been in a slump. Fitch, since scoring a career high 19 at Southern Illinois, had gone four games without scoring in double figures. Gets the steal here, recovered by Charles White. Loose ball. Roger Sookie comes up with it. I'm going to wear a helmet if we do any games next year. <laughs> we almost got him in our lap again. Chad Klein, no good. Fowler the rebound. An eight-point ISU lead. Could get bigger. Alpha down to the charge. A mistake there by the freshman. I tell you, he's done a lot of things right in this game, but right there you can see he leaves his feet with no yeah. place to go. You got to stop and pull up, jump straight up, keep that jump shot, come straight down to avoid that charging foul. What a gutsy play by Chad Klein, who just had an appendectomy a little over two weeks ago. He says it tightens up on him a little bit. But he's playing with it tonight. Playing through some pain. 12 minutes to play. Bradley down eight. Charles White. Now it's James Bailey. The jumper, no. Yes! So the shooter's roll for JB. He's got eight. And the guard, top of the key. Bradley crowd wants to walk. Van the guard drives, will get a foul called. I guess Chad Klein, that will be his third. That's the 16th foul on the Braves. Mike Vandegaard will go to the line. Number one in the Valley in blocked shots. With 36. That's fifth best in ISU history for a season. And in his last three games, he's averaging three blocked shots. It's them both. ISU back up to an eight-point lead. Bradley's starting to accumulate some fouls. Free throws have been an important part of this game so far. Charles, Willie, Swampy, James Bailey, and Chad Klein, all with three for the break. Klein up against Fowler, a charge. And Jim Molinari is hopping mad. There you see him. Get another look at nice backdoor cut there. Fowler comes over. It's the toughest call in basketball. He might have been there in time. That's again something you can avoid if you stop, go straight up and shoot that jump shot. Don't give the official a chance to call a charging foul on you. Vandegaard inside. Those are those are tough to call. Jim Molinari wanted our opinion. Is on Cagle. Todd Cagle, the junior from Normal Community. There's a foul trouble on the screen. 
The board has Cagle for five, but that's not right. Fifteen foul. Chaz just picked up his fourth also. Braves down eight. We are under 11 minutes to play now in the ball game. Sookie penetrates. Can't get it down. Fan to guard the rebound. Ryan Kern in there now for Illinois State. Van de Gard, strong to the bucket, fouled by David Winslow. Things get a little ugly. The chainsaw earning his nickname there. And Van de Gard retaliates. And Jim Molinari wants to time out and settle things down a little bit. Vandegaard will go to the line to shoot two with 10.29 to go. And we will be right back at Barberina 49-41, Illinois State an eight-point lead. When you practice conservation tillage to help protect the environment, you need the outstanding flexibility and proven effectiveness of Prowl herbicide. Applied pre-emergence or in early post-tank mixes, Prowl controls your toughest grasses and broadleaf leaves. You save money, too, up to $5 an acre over lasso or dual. Prowl works like clockwork all season long. Get Prowl at your local Cyanamid Agri Center dealer. Well, what can you do? Dominique of God. Okay, they've had, they've had their normal struggle trying to score points and with any consistency here. The mash unit will come in for Bradley, Chuck, uh, Chad Klein and James Hamilton. Chuck Barnes travels. Klein and Hamilton in for Bailey and Winslow. Steve Fritz replaces Chuck Barnes, who just traveled. 51-44. They're doing a good, so a good job inside of keeping Bradley from penetrating and getting those layups that we saw him get early in the game. Line for three! And just like that, it's a four-point ball game. 51-47, and the crowd has come alive. guard in no man's land and he gets bailed out here. Well, he hooks a little bit there and then drives in and gets himself under the basket. Had no chance of making that. That's a tough ball. That's a tough foul because you don't want to bail a guy out and that's exactly what happened there. Fouls on James Hamilton. His fourth ninth team foul on the next foul against Bradley. Illinois State will shoot two free throws for the remainder of the game. Vandegaard rolls in another one. He is money from the free throw line. Klein and, Van, or, uh, Klein and Hamilton both now with four fouls, both in the game. Can't make that one. He's 9 of 11 on the night. 52-47, a five-point Illinois State lead. Richard Thomas on Stookie. Now it's Vandegaard at the other end. That's only the sixth team foul on Illinois State and third personal on Vandegaard. Make that second on Vandegaard. Braves inbounds with their black shoes tonight. Charles White off the glass, no. Vandegaard tips it to Wemhainer. Well, Bradley ran a nice play there and got a good shot for Charles. He just couldn't get it down. Richard 
Thomas the driving way up. That's a big, big basket on the road. The home team starts to make a run. They get the crowd back in and make a stop defensively, and then somebody comes down and makes a quick cut to the basket and gets a layup. And it's a seven-point lead again for ISU. Sookie. And Bradley will maintain possession. Richard Thomas having a word with one of our officials tonight. I believe that's Terry Turlington he was having a chat with. Richard Thomas down the floor to Vandegaard. Bad idea. Bob Bender can't believe it. At least they threw it away from us. <laughs> crowd was getting on me at halftime. Why didn't you save us from Charles White? He ended up in about the third row. I was like, you're on your own, folks. 54-47. <laughs> Hamilton and Vandegaard going at it. Charge, and that's off for James Hamilton. That's five on Willie. Did they count the basket? Hamilton fouls out with 7.37 to go. We talk about an acting job. A heads up play. I guarantee you in a street fight he wouldn't have went down with that much uh, contact. I don't Could think have had so. to been a lot more contact to put him down. But that is definitely a blow to the Bradley Braves. Hamilton fouls out with eight points. Well, they won at Northern Iowa without him. Charles White, the steal. Charles White, the layup. Charles White's got a cramp in his leg. I thought he was trying to fire up the crowd. <laughs> We talked about this before, Roger. Is there any harder competitor than Charles White? Right, he is going to be one of the most loved players to ever play at Bradley and might be one, one of the few to never play on a winning team on the hilltop. That's right. It's going to be unfortunate, probably. He's probably got a good chance to do just that. He's one of the most popular players of all time and probably play on the worst four teams of all time. And it's funny because I've never known him by anything other than Charles, but the coaches from day one have called him Chuck. I haven't asked him about that. I don't think he cares, but it's always been Charles White. Yeah, and really a great, great young man. We get a chance to spend a little bit of time with him on the road. He's always friendly, always courteous, and just a pleasure to have around and a good role model, not only for the rest of the Bradley team, but all the young people in Peoria. A rose by any other name. Here's a look at it again as he's going in hard. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. Just did a, and they made a nice move using the rim to uh, to avoid having a shot blocked. And when he came down, and just uh, came up lame with a little bit of a cramp. Trainer Bill McGee here will take a look at Charles White. We'll try and update you on his situation. Seven minutes to play in the ball game. Charles White leading the way for Bradley with 15 points. So they lose James Hamilton who fouls out. They lose Charles White with some type of injury. Taylor, Jim Molinari wanted to charge there and doesn't get it. Taylor comes back up with it. And it's ISU ball with a new 45. Jim Molinari can't believe that. Free throw line jumper off the front of the rim. Just got a word from the Bradley bench that Charles White, after making the layup, stepped on a cheerleader's foot. I'd like to see that replay again. I didn't think he did, but we'll check it out. The injury problems continue for Bradley. And they weren't very deep to begin with. 15 on the shot clock. Klein with 12. He steps on Scott Taylor. 
James Bailey with eight, tied up by Webb Hainer. Foul by Webb Hainer. And a foul on Webb Hainer. Bob Bender was three seconds in the lane. Let's see Charles White again on that layup. Well, maybe he did. Keep going. Keep going. Well, he didn't step on it. He might have kicked it. Yeah, I think he'd gotten a cramp just from uh, coming down the floor. He may have landed on that foot with all of his weight. And James Bailey at the line. A cramp. They're still working on him. I really expect him to be back. Uh, the way he's stretching his calf buckle there, it looks like it's a cramp. James Bailey with nine. Charles White will check back in. Bailey hits the ball. And we've got ourselves a ball game. 54-51. Brains down three. Charles White back in. Gets a big hand from the crowd. And this is as loud as this crowd's been all season. Richard Thomas tries to create. Fitch tries to dunk. Jim Molinari wanted goaltending. He wanted offensive basket interference. Nothing doing. New 45 for the Redbirds. Taylor loses it. Tied up by Roger Sookie. Bradley Ball. Possession arrow favors the Braves. Now you said it right. ISU does not have that ability to put teams away. They've won a lot of road games in this league, but they're going to be in a battle here. If Bradley can get one to go down this time, this is going to be a new ball game. Bradley 5-2 on the road. Let we'll make that Illinois State 5-2 on the road in the Valley. James Bailey has it swatted away by Webb here. Looks like he got a lot of ball from here. Well, Bailey's going to go to the line and shoot two. I thought he got him across the arm. We're going to get a look at it here. What's Webb coming in from the right side of the screen. This game a pretty good job across the floor on. You, you can tell when a, when, a, when a player's going up for a shot by if he gets fouled or if it's all fouled by where the ball goes. Generally, if the ball goes up in the air, that indicates that he was hit on the hand and the momentum carried the ball up. If the player gets all ball, generally the hands continue to go up and the ball goes down. James Bailey, 2 of 3 from the line tonight. Makes that one. And Jim Molinari is within 2. Todd Cagle will check in for Todd Webhainer. Webhainer, two personal fouls, eight team fouls on the Redbirds. So Bradley in the one and one from here on in. JB is last home game. Missed that one. Bradley still down by two. And then the Chad Klein still with four fouls. James Hamilton has fouled out. Vandegaard, a tough shot, followed up by Fowler. High issue with a real size advantage now, and Fowler just took Dwayne Broussard right into the basket, jumped right over him, tipped that in. And that's going to be a factor in the latter part of this game with Bradley's lack of size inside. You know, it's so frustrating when you play good defense and you force them to take a bad shot or to miss a shot, but when you can't get that defensive rebound and they can tip it in or get a second chance. Crowd wanted Sookie to take the three. And Fowler is the Fowler, who's third. Been a long year for that man. Braves with their third consecutive 20 loss season. Only Indiana State can match that. They lost 20 games in four consecutive seasons. In the Valley, that is. JB at the line, hits it. 
James Bailey earlier this year was a winner of the National Student Athlete Award from the National Association of Academic Advisors for Athletes. James nominated by Sue Parziali, the Bradley Academic Advisor. James' motto, nothing stops the determined. He's overcome a handicap and being dubbed Newcomer of the Year in the preseason a year ago. He's got Bradley within two. 56, to go. 54. Plenty of time. And we got ourselves a good one. The Cardiac Kids are at it again. Illinois State trying to win another nail biter in the final minutes. Has it tipped away. Graves on the break. Sookie stolen away by Cagle. A great defensive play by Cagle. Now it's Vandegaard. Baseline jumper has it swatted away. And now it's Charles White. And we're going back and forth. White the miss. Broussard comes up with it. Graves will set it up with 3.20 to go. Give a little bit of credit to James Bailey there on that rebound. He couldn't grab it, but he tipped it out to Broussard. Kept it alive for Bradley. The Braves fighting for their postseason lives here. Down two with three minutes to play. James Hamilton is fouled out for Bradley. You're right, Lee. If they score here, this place will be as loud as it's been in a couple of years. Boy, you got to love the effort of both teams tonight. 12 on the shot clock. Now 10. Charles with 8. With 7. Tries to make a move. Puts it up with five on the shot clock. Fowler couldn't control it, but Thomas comes away with it. Timeout. Bob Bender wants to talk it over, and he's got to wonder, what do I have to do to win a blowout? A two-point ball game with 2.33 to play. Don't go anywhere. Two with 2.33 to play. This exciting Bradley basketball telecast is protected by broadcast rights granted by Bradley University and the Missouri Valley Conference. Any rebroadcast. Uh, yeah, if you want to show it again and you don't get our permission or Bradley University's permission, you're going to be in a heap of trouble. That's the layman's version of the disclaimer. <laughs> Just keep going. That's what Dad always told me. You mess up, just keep going. I want to pass along happy birthday wishes to my friend Wes Mattarelli. I believe he turns 12 today. Happy birthday to him. The beat goes on for the Braves as they're back within two. They've hit how many three-pointers this half? Four. That might be a record. I don't think they've missed one, have they? At least not in the second half. They were 0 for 2 from three-point land in the first period. As you spread it out, they want to try and use quickness here. Open it up, get nobody under the basket, and try to use quickness to penetrate, get themselves an easy one. Now they switch up and run a set play. Looking for Vandegaard on Klein. That's not a bad move. Nice pass inside. Shot clock at five. Tegel hits the layup. A nice pass by Mike Vandegaard. Todd Cagle, a former walk-on from Normal Community, makes it a four-point game with a minute 45 to play. Another classic Bradley ISU showdown. There have been some good ones over the years. Remember Jimmy Less's layup to win it? Remember Hershey Hawkins' layup to win it in the Valley Tournament at Tulsa? 125. Shot clock at 12. Klein, the key. Good. Good head fake. One dribble, step under, pull up, and shoot the jump shot. That's a big basket for anybody at this point in the game. But the freshman has stepped up big. Especially without Willie on the floor. Somebody's going to have to take charge. And there's that spread. Backdoor cut, Richard Thomas. It worked like a charm. There's that spread. We talked about it before. It looks like they're going to try and come down and do that every time. And if they don't get something initially, go into a set play. 50 seconds to play. Braves down four. Turnover. Webb Hayter the steal. 
And the foul on Roger Sookie, and we're going to spend some time at the free throw line for the final 42 seconds. That's a tough break. Chad got a little hung out front with the ball and didn't have anybody to go to. He tried to get it to Charles. Charles wasn't expecting the pass and ended up turning it over. Remainer, 75% free throw she will go to the line. His teammates call him T-Dub. Fourth in the Valley and steals. He came up with a turnover there. He struggled from the field this season, but he shot pretty well from the strike. He hit the game-winning basket at Indiana State, another one of those final second finales for Illinois State. There you get a look at James Hamilton who fouled out with a little over seven minutes to go. And there's a call you will not see very often. Ron Spiller making a call saying uh, the rim here that stepped back and stepped out of the free throw circle. That's going to be a real popular call. Now, he's being overruled, and they're going to let him shoot. I was looking down at my paper, explain what happened again. You know, as you see, now Wimhater, we don't get a look at him. Wimhater steps back almost all the way to the edge of the semicircle there and actually stepped over that line. The official out on the play called that a violation. He's going to take the free throw, or the second free throw away from him. He was overruled after a short conference and was given a chance to shoot again. Klein misses the three. James Bailey had a hand on the rebound. Loose ball. Charles White, Scott Fowler, jump ball. That'll go to ISU. Possession arrow points ISU's way. Now that's, <laughs> that's not a rule I'm familiar with. You can't back out of the circle. I've, ne I've never seen a call. The guy from Drake almost shot from half court when he shot free throws. Remember him? I 29 remember. seconds to play. In four ball games, they've been decided in the last three seconds. Six times this season, ISU games have been decided by two points or less. Two points or less. All of those in the last ten games. Bob Bender's birds four and two in those situations. It doesn't look like it's going to come down to it here. Although Bradley fought hard, and except for a few defensive lapses, played a pretty good ball game. And really hung in there pretty well with uh, Willie fouling out. 7:37 left in the game when he did foul out. They managed to hang right there, right until the end. They're just going to come up a little bit short one more time. Air ball followed up by Charles White. Bradley calls time. That's their last. They won't be able to stop the clock again. Only 16 seconds to go down 58-64. We'll take a break and be right back. Our final telecast of the season, 64-58 ISU and Roger, you got to figure that uh, this pretty much eliminates Bradley from the Valley Tournament. They have to go to Tulsa, they have to go to Wichita State. The Shockers still have freshman of the year candidate John Smith who walked off the floor the other night, but I'm told he is back with the Shockers. They've got two of their last three at home. And they had a big win the other day at Creighton, too, which puts them right back in position to get that eighth spot again. So they're going to be fired up. They'll probably need that game. And uh, if Bradley loses this one and goes on to lose a toss, it won't mean much to the Braves when they go down there. Ten seconds. Three by James Bailey. No good. Vandegaard taps it out. Smith. Now Sookie with two, with one. It goes in, but it won't make a difference. 64. You should count the basket. Well, I would hope 64, so. It should 60. be 64-60, but they're asleep at the wheel again over at the scorer's table. 64-58, the final on the board here, but that one should have counted. We'll be back at Carverina in just a minute. When my dad died, 
It was a shock going through all this stuff. I mean, uh, I'm sure he knew what happened. Valley Bradley drops to 3 and 13 in the Valley, 7 and 21 overall. Illinois State 15 and 10, 12 and 4 in the Missouri Valley Conference. And our Bradley player of the game, the Budweiser player of the game, in his final home game as a senior for Bradley James Bailey with 13 points. He wasn't the high man, but he really made a contribution and uh, helped out with James Hamilton fouling out of the ball game. Yeah, I thought he really stepped up and played very well. I thought the key of the game, I got it right here in my hand, I asked you 21 of 27 from the free throw line. Bradley 8 for 13. The percentage is not being that big a factor. It's a number of attempts shot. And I asked you with 21 for 27. A very good percentage, but it just showed their ability to get the ball inside and then get the ball going toward the basket. You saw at the end they did, they did a great job of spreading the ball out, getting the penetration, getting the easy baskets, using their quickness basically over Bradley and uh, I think the difference in the ball game tonight. Both teams played really hard. That was really a fun game to watch. It, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, it, it follows the trend that's happened all season long for Illinois State. They've won games at the free throw line by really punching the ball in, going to the line for a number of attempts. And for Bradley, they haven't gotten to the line a, a lot. Uh, I remember particularly the Southwest Missouri State game we did where I don't think they attempted a free throw in the first half. That's and maybe right. two for the game. Well, a lot of that's personnel, too. You, when you when you play an inside game, you've got to have people inside that can command a position in there and demand the basketball. And you've got to have somebody that can get it to them, and they've got to be able to do something with it. Uh, Willie's pretty good down there. He's shown uh, an ability to score from down there all year long. But the inability of Bradley to hit that outside jump shot on a consistent basis just makes it tough for he and Chad when they are, and, and uh, James Bailey also when they are down low because the defense can sag in and really give a lot of help. Well, the Braves are going to need a lot of help to get to St. Louis in the Missouri Valley Tournament. ISU moves a half game in front of Southwest Missouri State, and they are in second place by themselves. Our uh, goodbye tonight, our final goodbye to Mark Flesner who's going to Indianapolis. Good luck to him. Mark Flashner, you got a phone call back here at Master Control. <laughs> was, oh, boy, a nice hairdo for him. Good luck to him in Indianapolis at WRTV, a 10-year veteran at WEEK, and our best wishes to Mark Flesner. 64-60, our final score here, Roger. Again, it was a pleasure this season. Was we'll a, see you next year, buddy. It was a good year. It's only going to get better. Hang in there, Bradley fans. Things will get better. They're uh, trying to build things right here, and, and I feel good about the future. I think we're going to come back and see some improvement every year. Thanks again. 64-60, the final. Stay tuned for In the Heat of the Night. Next. <laughs> Seating has been a presentation of 25 Sports, Downstate Sports Leader. The people.